Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Scott Fisher. And here's a bit about Scott. A decade ago, Scott Fisher co-founded the Energy Efficiency Consultancy, Seal Power, LLC. As its managing member, Scott works closely with local environmental groups, elected officials, and environmental science and sustainability leaders to develop and promote community partnerships designed to increase energy efficiency awareness. Scott's company, Seal Power LLC, was awarded 2019, 2020, and 2021 Home Performance with Energy Star Contractor of the Year recognition. The the national honor is reserved for the top 1% of energy efficiency consultancies. Scott has been featured in the New York Times, Realtor Magazines, Mashable, and on Yahoo News, as well as on ABC World News tonight, and has reached people across the globe with his book. Hashtag home, number one, 101 ways to improve your home's comfort and energy efficiency. And if that's something that you haven't tapped into, it's time for you to start looking into home energy efficiency so you could save money and then you could take the money that you're saving and diversify it to something else so you could begin to produce generational wealth for yourself and your family. So without further ado, welcome Scott Fisher. Thank you so much, Genesis, for having me here today. It's such a pleasure to be with you. I'm a fan of your podcast and I'm excited to get started with you today. My pleasure. And so, Scott, I want you to start by unpacking the name of your business. How did you come up with it and what's the significance behind it? Back more than a decade ago, I co-founded CL Power with a partner and we originally intended to get into the solar space. So we, we expected to be right now installing solar panels on people's homes. But what we, came up, what we came to realize very quickly is that the housing stock where we're based, which is here in, Northeast, in the Northeast, we're out of, out of New Jersey, the housing stock here in New Jersey is so old and outdated and inefficient that it's sort of like putting a Band-Aid on a hemorrhaging wound because these, ho- these homes were just leaking out energy so quickly that the idea of turning towards renewables right off of the bat just didn't seem to make a lot of sense. So we pivoted a little bit and we went into um, insulation, weatherization, uh, high efficiency heating, air conditioning and hot water systems. So it was a bit of a pivot. CL is French for sky or heavens. So the idea was uh, a play on words for solar, but we actually sort of pivoted and moved into the energy efficiency space. Ah, nice. And are you and your business partners still partners today? Interestingly enough, we're still very good friends, but we're not partners at this point. Uh, my wife and I, we own the business a wholly. Uh, we, we, we started off together. Uh, it was, it's, it's, I don't know, for those of you who have started a business before, it's, it's, it can be a long road. Um, and he was a little bit younger than I. He just didn't have the financial wherewithal to hang in there with me. Um, so at, at one point, several years into, this, into the business, we parted ways um, and uh, he's off He's actually moved to the West Coast and he's doing very well. He's there with himself and his family. Oh, beautiful. And it's always good to hear stories like this because sometimes people see the success, but they never really uncover, you know, the start ugly moments and how you got to the level of success that you have now. So you and your wife are sole owners of SEAL and now you're working on it. You want to correct the problems and talk about how can we make these homes efficient? And while you're making the homes efficient, once it gets up to certain standards, then you could go into the solar and the other things to advance their technology. So right now with you having all the accolades that you have and the awards that you won for energy efficiencies, are you only focused primarily on your region or have you taken it outside of the state that you live in? That's a great question. One of the reasons that uh, that I'm out there doing these types of podcasts and, and communicating this message is because we've developed somewhat of a unique delivery model. So what we've done over the years and what's, what's brought us some of the accolades that you mentioned and what was featured in the New York Times and for the for three consecutive years, we were the energy experts on ABC World News tonight. We've had some amazing recognition. But what's brought us that recognition in many ways is the way that we've been able to deliver home performance with Energy Star to the communities that we serve. 
We've started sort of somewhat of a unique business model in this space, whereby we partner with municipalities to co-promote sustainability and energy efficiency to their communities. Uh, and we develop these unique campaigns uh, that, are, that are customized to each town that we're working with. We've done this with about a dozen different municipalities to date, uh, including some very well-known communities like Princeton, uh, Woodbridge, um, uh, Glen Rock, uh, Summit. There's a number of different communities here in the state that we operate in in New Jersey. Right now we're, we're regional, but my hope is that we can see this delivery model start to spread across the country and, and help us get to where we need to be from a sustainability standpoint. A lot of people that own their home, um, especially here in the Northeast, and I think there in the Midwest where, where, where you're located, you know, the housing stock tends to be on the older side and people who buy an older home they tend to think that the house is old and it's cold and it's always going to be old and cold and there's really nothing that I can do with it. In fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. There's some incredible programs out there, including one of the ones that you mentioned called the, the, the Home Performance with Energy Star program that can really help take an old, outdated, inefficient home and bring it to the standards that we know today for a new construction home. So it, it's a powerful program. It's one that we've been a part of for more than a decade. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's really can be an amazing program for, for somebody who's dealing with some of the comfort uh, issues that are, that are inherent to an older home and some of the heating bills that are inherent to an older home. Yes, because depending on where you're located, those all those extra costs could really, you know, make or break you, especially if you're in a place where you're like dishing out maybe $300, $400 in electricity and et cetera. I'm currently down in the South, so I'm based in Texas. So I kind of get what you're saying. So what I've seen some clients, because my business partner and I, we are in the solar business. So we have a brand called Hello Wellness, and that's part of Hello Solar and et cetera. So we do solar panels and et cetera. And one thing that we're telling people is if you've never considered solar panel, it doesn't hurt to get a quote and looking into it. Because if you get that quote and you see how much you're saving in comparison to how much you're dishing out with your electricity and all of the other maintenance that goes into your house, it may actually be worthwhile. And if it works for you, it does. If it doesn't, then so be it. And with where you and your wife are regionally, you mentioned um, energy efficiency. So another thing I've heard with people who have older homes, because sometimes people want the older home because the way that it's structured in comparison to the newer homes, how they're just thrown up so fast nowadays, they, they could take an older home, you could pull out the windows and replace the windows and get your windows up to specs and codes to make sure they have enough insulation in them. There's new diff new um, insulation companies that will come out. And I know there's the foam insulation versus, you know, the padding. In um, and I don't actually know the terminology. So help me out here, Scott. But have you seen sure. um, people in your area do some uh, similar things to help get their homes up to standards that we have nowadays, and then you come in behind behind them and say, okay, we could offer this, this, and this to advance what you have already done. Absolutely, 100%. So, and I apologize, I had Chicago in my mind, but uh, Texas is even more uh, applicable because in Texas, you're getting so much sun down there and that insulation that's buffering the space in your house um, from your between the roof and your living space below, is it just the heat's blazing on that nonstop. So that insulation down there in Texas is equally as important, if not more important than it is in Chicago. So, um, but yes, to your point, exactly right. So if you are living in a colder climate in the winter time, you really wanna focus on the upper levels of your home. You wanna make sure that, that the entire plane of your house is air sealed up um, where it meets the attic. So you have the attic and then there's the floor of the attic and then you have the living space beneath. You wanna make sure that that's completely air sealed the type of insulation that you're going to use is really going to be dependent upon the individual situation of your house. Uh, we use a lot of cellulose. Uh, fiberglass is a very common insulation product for those, for those scenarios. But one of the things that we emphasize to our customers is that it's so important to make sure that you really air seal that entire plane. Because if you think about it, you have fiberglass, that's almost the consistency of like a cotton candy. You can grab a piece of fiberglass, 
put it in your hand and blow in it, and you'll feel your breath come through to the other side of your hand. So without that air seal, that fiberglass is really not an effective product. Most insulation products, with, with the exception of spray foam that you mentioned, probably wouldn't be an effective product in that circumstance. You wanna really make sure you're sealing up those electrical penetrations, those plumbing penetrations, and that's one of the most impactful things that people can do for their home. You mentioned solar. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing right here in the Northeast is a big movement towards electrification. It's one of the most important things that we're going to all need to do eventually as homeowners is move gradually towards an uh, electrification of the home because what's happening is we want to get away from combustion, right? Combustion is, is contributing, is, is exuding a lot of carbon into the atmosphere. It's causing, it's a, it's a known cause of global warming. So we want to stop burning things inside of our home and we want to move gradually to heat our hot water, to heat our homes and use heat pumps and, and a lot of the, um, the things that don't lend themselves to additional carbon into our atmosphere. So we're seeing an incredible tr transition into electrification. So really now more than ever, we've seen this big, huge increase in solar demand from our customers. So we're weatherizing the house, we're getting them nice, tight and efficient. And then they're moving on to look at solar as a way to, as, as a way to now um, power this electrification trend. So they've, they've weatherized their home, they've converted their heating system to either a ground source or air source heat pump, they've converted their hot water to electric, they've converted their range to electric, and now they're really looking to power the whole house using renewable energy from the solar panels that you mentioned. Wow, that's incredible. So there's different phases that they're going through and each phase is very important because over time that's producing the sustainability that your business is talking about. And then it's also helping our environment because with global warming right now, there, there are certain things that we need to be mindful of because we see that there's so many things that are going on like just the other day, they mentioned in the Denver, Colorado area, there wasn't snow on Echo Mountain. So people are like, oh my gosh, normally around this time of the year, there's snow. So there's so many different environmental factors that are going around us. And if we just pay attention to those things that's going around us and take different um, steps to make sure that we are preserving our earth and all of the things that go into it, then we're actually saving the earth and we're producing that sustainability. We're talking about efficiencies and et cetera, but sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So having conversations like this, Scott, is actually helping someone because they're, they're being educated, it's inspiring them, and it's also motivating them to go do their due diligence and research some of the things that you and I are talking about today. And one thing I actually want to go back to, because you mentioned uh, municipalities earlier, and I wanted to ask you, are you partnered with any home builders? Because if you are working with the home builder from the get go, then you can save them a lot of time by just telling them, hey, let's do it this way. And then you bring what you have to the table and I'll meet you where you're at. And then we can ensure that the home that you're building is sustainable. It is efficient. And in the long run, we're promoting that energy efficiency, which is going to save the buyer money in the long run. We're also promoting sustainability. And then we're helping your company get a kickback on Energy Star. And then my company is also winning. So you see more collaboration that's complementing one another versus competition there. Absolutely. And we're really mostly in the retrofit space. So we're working mostly with existing homeowners who in, in, the, in, the, in the built environment currently. What we're really trying to help them do is maximize the amount of incentive money that's available to them to make the types of improvements that we've been discussing here today. So this, this program that I mentioned earlier, Home Performance with Energy Star, there's about 47 different variants of that program across the country. Every uh, 47 states have a different version of that program. And most of those states offer incentives to homeowners to make these types of improvements. So to your point earlier about achieving financial security, investing in energy efficiency and, renew and renewable energy is almost like a, investing into a bond. These are expenses that you're going to have to pay for the foreseeable future. So if you can make an investment now that will lessen your out-of-pocket cost going forward for the for the in perpetuity for the duration while you live in your home, you're essentially locking in a, a set amount of appreciation that you're going to be able to pocket 
for the foreseeable future, right? So, uh, for a lot of people who are investing in the markets now, they're very high. You know, one thing that one thing that we're hearing from our customers is they're taking some money off the table. They're purchasing potentially like a renewable energy system for their home, and that will yield a return for them for the foreseeable future for the duration that they live in their house. Um, in our case, we're working with homeowners to help them get as much incentive money as they can through through utility programs that are offered here in the state. New Jersey has a very robust incentive program that's available for anybody that owns a home here in New Jersey to help them make these types of weatherization improvements. In New Jersey, it's up to $5,000 in cash back and up to $15,000 in zero interest financing that are available to homeowners that install heating, air conditioning, and insulation upgrades into their home. Um, in the, and those programs exist in states throughout the country. There's a website, uh, desire.com, D-S-I-R-E.com, that is a database of different renewable energy and energy efficiency incentives that is a national database that people from across the country can log into to find out what incentives are available near you. There's also federal tax credits that are available for a lot of the improvements that we've been talking about as well. And for those with um, more modest means, there are, there are a, um, a tremendous number of different uh, weatherization programs that are available to low income families. Uh, and this infrastructure bill that just passed had a lot of money earmarked for that exact purpose as well. So regardless of your strata um, from an economic standpoint, weatherization is attainable for you. And it was something that, that I definitely encourage everybody to look into and find out what, what, what's, what's available for your home. Thank you, Scott. So if I heard you correctly, right now your focus is on current current homeowners and not necessarily working with the builders on new constructions because there's a lot of things that could be done with existing homeowners and just weatherization their, their home along with them getting the incentive. So that is your primary focus right now with SEAL. Yes, it is. And then whenever you are approached by a new client, what are some of the things that you talk about with that client just to make sure that they understand what your business can offer? Great question. Uh, we're, our, our company is actually affiliated with an organization called the Building Performance Institute. And what, typically where we start with a, with a homeowner who, who's living in a house is we perform something called a home energy audit on their house. A home energy has, a, has an energy efficiency to it. So we come in there with a bunch of different specialized uh, equipment that's really designed to figure out, pinpoint exactly how that home is losing or wasting energy. We'll spend about three hours at that house performing a variety of different tests on the home, including a whole bunch of safety tests, because the last thing we want to do is come in and seal and insulate a house that might have had a heating system that was backdrafting or a gas leak or something like that. So we check all of that stuff, make sure that stuff is operating the way that it was designed to, and that, that, that there really are no health and safety issues that we might be exacerbating by sealing and insulating a home. Uh, and then we put together a report for that homeowner, and that report outline is like a blueprint. It outlines the, a specific path that the homeowner can take to realize a much more comfortable and efficient home. It has uh, all the different recommendations in there. The recommendations are prioritized based on your on the you know, sort of bang for the buck, if you will. Uh, so you know, we don't want to see a homeowner spend you know twenty five thousand dollars on new windows when in fact you know they might be able to spend a fraction of that by insulating their attic or in their exterior walls achieve a much greater efficiency gain and, and comfort gain from that improvement and really save a significant amount of money at the same time, assuming that their windows are operable and that they're in decent condition. Uh, if Obviously, if you have some mechanical defects, you know, definitely replacing the windows is something that you want to look into. But generally speaking, window companies have done a great job of marketing windows in a way that makes you think that you're going to suddenly be so much more comfortable in your home when you replace them. But for most people, windows represent about 20% of the exterior surface of your home. A, 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 a double pane window is an, a, an R value of about two, a, or an equivalent R value of about two. A triple pane window, very expensive with the fancy um, gas in it and everything, you know, that'll get you an R value of a, roughly four or five versus a well insulated wall, which is an R value of 13 and takes up a much greater surface area of your home the greater the R value, the higher the resistance to heat and to cold, so to variations in temperature. So a lot of times we're, we're explaining this to homeowners, letting them know that they can get a much greater benefit for a much lesser cost, in many cases by insulating their house rather than 
focusing on that that one that one improvement of upgrading the windows. That makes sense. And just for context here, what exactly does the R value mean, Scott? Great question. R value, uh, R is resistance. So the greater the number, the greater the resistance to temperature. So here in our area, in an attic, we would want to see an R50. And for most insulation materials, that's about 15 or 16 inches of insulation that we would want to see in somebody's attic uh, here in the Northeast to buffer those, those extreme winter, the cold winter months and the really hot summer months. So you'd want to see insulation pretty much up to your knees uh, anywhere here or in the Midwest or any of your colder climates. Uh, down where you are in Texas and the Southwest, you know, a lot of times you'd want to see similar levels, but it's for different reasons. You're really trying to buffer the radiation of the sun beating down on your roof. Um, and each R value varies per clim per, per uh, where you're located per climate. So you'd want to just sort of Google your climate and see what's see what the recommended R value is where you live. That's really good. And that's um, so educational because as you were talking about the different types of the window, and then you talked about the um, insulation in the wall. So we went from an R value of two to five to just insulating your uh, your wall, 13. And then you talked about the attic, 50. That is a big jump in between. So it, de it definitely helps put things in perspective. Do you want to spend X amount of dollars on windows or do you want to spend X amount of money to make sure that your walls are properly insulated and just give you more um, adequate coverage and really promote that weatherization, which will overall drive that cost down that you're paying um, monthly for certain bills. And then Scott, I, I know you want to branch out into other regions. So what does that look like for you in the coming year? Yeah. Right now, the, uh, we're going through a transition period in New Jersey where um, the incentive programs used to be operated by a centralized administrator, and now the regional utility companies in the state have taken over those programs. New Jersey is really making a big push towards sustainability and energy efficiency. They're looking into offshore wind. They have an energy master plan. They have an administration that's very focused on sustainability and, and really removing as where, at wherever they can. So uh, we, we expect to have our hands full here for the foreseeable future. Uh, we're hoping to see this, this sort of delivery method in the communities that we've worked expand. We're hoping to see more providers around the country develop these community-based programs where they're out there working in conjunction with the municipality and with the township that they live in um, to really promote sustainability in their community and really use that as a delivery mechanism to get to the different homeowners that are in these towns because there's so much uh, there's so much housing stock out there that would benefit from very simple and straightforward insulation upgrades and air sealing upgrades. Um, and then followed by some of the mechanical equipment that we spoke about, that electrification process that we're gonna hear a lot more of as the country makes a big push towards sustainability, generally speaking. Thank you so much for breaking that down. So right now, you're gonna stay in the New Jersey area, really focus on the new things that are coming down the pipe. And once, once that keeps you busy for a while, then in the foreseeable future, maybe you'll look into other regions, maybe coming down to Texas, who knows, going somewhere else. Um, <laughs> so Scott, I want you to close us out by leaving us with one or two gems. And remember the mission is to educate, inspire and motivate on GEMS podcast. And then we'll get your um, contact information so people could connect with you. My gems are, would be take what's available to you. You know, you really do some due diligence, look into what's available for your home, what incentives are out there that can make, that can lower the operating costs of your home, put more money in your pocket, stretch your household budget, stretch your home improvement budget, because there's really a whole bunch of, a, a lot of states offer some very innovative and unique programs that are really designed to help homeowners maximize the energy efficiency of their house. Check out Home Performance with Energy Star, check with your local utility company, check that Desire website that I spoke about, dsire.org, and really look into what's available for you to, to provide some assistance in making these improvements because these improvements aren't cheap and they're and, and they can be you know a, a little bit of a, of a of a process to install 
But once they're done, they're with you for the life of the home. The home is gonna be much more comfortable. It's gonna cost you a lot less to operate that home. And it's really gonna help stretch your household budget and make you feel more comfortable in your space at the same time. I just went through this in my house, believe it or not, after more than a decade of being in this business, I finally had the opportunity to upgrade my home. And this summer, I can't tell you the difference it would make. The, the, the air conditioning used to run on the second level of my home almost nonstop trying to keep up with the, uh, the warm summer months. And since we've, air, since we've insulated and air sealed the attic, it comes on, it cools off the space, it turns off, we get to enjoy that, and it's a much more efficient process. It's dropped our bills significantly, and we received incentives to do that. So it was an improvement. That's I encourage a you to look into that. That's amazing because it's like a win-win situation. And it's funny that you said you've been in the business for over a decade, but you just did it for your home. So congratulations on those improvements. And I'm glad that you're actually reaping the benefits and the results. And Scott, I want you to tell the listeners and viewers, how can they connect with you on social media, your business website, and any other information you want to plug? Oh, thank you. Uh, we're, our website is sealpower.com, C-I-E-L-P-O-W-E-R.com. We're on uh, most social media under the same thing, uh, C-I-E-L-P-O-W-E-R.com uh, or at sealpower. Uh, and the, the book is uh, hashtag home 101 ways to improve the comfort and energy efficiency of your home. That has its own website. And my blog is Consciousness in Everyday Life. If you'd like to explore some of the musings that I've had over the years, you know, feel free to stop by there as well. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS Podcast with Genesis and Mars Kemp. You just heard Scott Fisher with Seal Power. All of his contact information will be in the show notes. So make sure you read, read, read. Subscribe to the podcast where you're listening to it via audio. And follow us on our YouTube channel, GEMS with Genesis and Mars Kemp. Don't forget to that hit, hit, hit that notification bell so you'll always be notified whenever amazing content is posted and until we chat next time make sure you do your due diligence look at um what's going on in your neck of the woods when it comes to sustainability sustainability energy efficiencies and etc because you don't want to leave money on the table if you could pull that money off and put it back into your home and save over time we're here for generational wealth and we're also here to diversify your wealth in the best ways possible so until we chat next time peace love and lots of blessings have yourself an amazing day